keep it together. <laughs> oh, hey, <laughs> you must be here for the uh, normal $20 crossbow with no secrets. Yeah, that sounds pretty fun or cool or, or whatever. Maybe it would be like more fun if there was a secret. Oh, okay, I can't keep the secret anymore, guys. It's too good. Like literally, guys, without this secret, your crossbow is going to be weaker to start out with. Cringe. It's going to get weaker every single time you shoot it. And worst case scenario, your limbs will snap. Like the limbs of the crossbow, not your arms and legs, maybe. And they'll come flying back and freaking kill you. So dang, sounds like a pretty good secret, huh? I got it right here, ready to show you. Here we go. What the? Oh, guys, the secret's inside the PVC pipe. Hold on, let me try to look real hard and see if I can see the secret in there. <sighs> Nothing. It's crazy. Very frustrating. I mean, honestly, I almost feel like a uh, like a hacker trying to look at someone's private information, but I can't because it's inside the secure tunnel that is NordVPN. The secret is fiberglass rods, by the way. For all those reasons that I mentioned, having it inside of the PVC, total game changer. Pretty dang good secret, huh? Can you imagine how dumb I would've looked though? Coming out here, waving this thing in your face, but I'm like, oh, I have a secret, but please don't look at this. Oh, but I got a secret, huh? but don't look, please. That's how silly you would look, being on the internet without a VPN and expecting no one's gonna see your private information. Just ridiculous, <laughs> foolish, honestly. And guys, I respect you too much to leave you looking like that. So I got the hookup, nordvpn.com forward slash alpha. Guys, NordVPN is going to encrypt your IP address whenever you're on the internet. This works on your phone, your tablet, your desktop, your laptop. You can actually hook up six devices at the same time on a single membership. What the heck? That's just too generous. But guys, just a testament to NordVPN. NordVPN is the freaking best. They've secured not only my information, they've secured my future here on YouTube by sponsoring these videos. So dang guys, but honestly, show them some love. They've, they've done a lot. NordVPN.com forward slash alpha. Right now, the deal is two years plus one month at a huge discount. You use my code, it lets them know I sent you, and it opens the door to me getting sponsored more in the future. Thank you guys for putting up with me. Thank you NordVPN for the sponsorship. Let's build a dang old crossbow. Your prying eyes might have spotted the prototype in the background. You pervert. So I guess now is as good a time as any to let you guys know, yeah, this thing is very easy to make. It's very affordable. It doesn't take that many tools. All around, very accessible. The one thing that it's not though, is a kid's toy. If you're thinking of handing this thing off to somebody that you wouldn't hand a regular store-bought crossbow to, don't. We're gonna start with the body of the crossbow. You are gonna find this hard to believe because of the expert craftsmanship, but it's actually just a two by four. And fun fact, you don't actually need to do any of this stuff for it to be functional. It just makes it more comfortable to hold, makes it look a little more legit, but it'll work the exact same even if you don't do that. You know what, I don't normally do this, but I'm feeling a little generous. I'll give you guys a little, uh, little peep of some measurements here. What do you think of that? Pretty good, I think. Now, look, it doesn't have to be super pretty, as long as it's comfy. And honestly, it doesn't even have to be comfy. Make it as uncomfortable as you want. That'd be kind of epic, I guess. The only thing that I definitely would recommend, this part right here, keep it a bit chunky. As you saw from the way that I was able to just cut those lines and then knock out pieces, pine is a very soft wood and it's prone to breaking along the grain. So I've made sure that there's no straight grain that's running across that's less than, say about two and a half, three inches. That should be pretty sturdy. But even on top of that, after I do all the painting, I'm gonna wrap it up really good too. But that is really all you gotta do for the grip and the stock. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the front. Okay, now we're gonna drill the whole for the PVC. Oh, the drill! Uh, I said no tools! What are no, I didn't. Look at the title. I said minimal tools. If your house doesn't have a drill in it, do you even have a house? I don't think I've ever seen a house without a drill. I'm pretty sure houses come with drills. 
cool. And you'll see that these are kind of uh, slanted, huh? Well, this is the top of the crossbow. When you got the two pieces of PVC in there and they flex together, having the limbs of the crossbow bend towards the top is going to allow the string to sit way more lightly on the track. That means less friction, which means greater arrow speed. So this is a little poopy looking. I'm just gonna sand everything down real quick. I'll see you in a second. We'll get to work on the firing mechanism and the limbs. And here's your trigger mechanism, almost. First, go ahead and figure out where you want your trigger to comfortably sit. drilled some little holes in the bottom so the epoxy can kind of flow through and I'm gonna have this little spacer clamped in here just to make sure that the clamp doesn't epoxy shut. Alright now grab yourself a five foot length of this half inch CPVC. I couldn't really tell you what the difference between CPVC and PVC is. Probably something to do with the C I would imagine. But go ahead and cut this directly in half so you got two two and a half foot pieces. Now you're gonna cut the ends off at an angle so that they slope in the same direction. Little life hack you can use the words on the side to line things up. Okay, I know you can order fiberglass rods as like an actual building material on the internet, but for me, the most convenient way is just to get these driveway markers. These are like what you stick in the ground next to your driveway so you don't like run over the grass or whatever. You can find these at literally any home improvement store. They're gonna be next to the like address numbers that you stick on the side of your house. So you're going to trim them down to size so that there's about an inch and a half sticking out of both ends. Now take a four inch nail, cut the head off, cut it in half, and these are gonna be the pins that hold the string back in the firing mechanism. And very carefully plant them on both both sides of the part of the clamp that pops up when you squeeze it. Okay, now with the groove in the top, I can literally string this thing up right now and it'll fire, just like you saw the prototype fire in the beginning. So with only rounding up, we got $4 for the PVC, $4 for the two by four, $8, Oh, $8 for the fiberglass, maybe a dollar for the clamp, and we'll say $3 for the paracord. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a $20 crossbow. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thanks, I appreciate it. Stop. So yeah, you can do it. You can make a crossbow for 20 bucks, uh, but I need a good thumbnail. So we're gonna get a little extracurricular. Let's make, I'm gonna make it look nice-ish. we may proceed. Check out this trick I learned from the Backyard Boyer. To string a crossbow when you're alone, I never would have thought of this. Basically, you just string up the crossbow, but really, really loose, and you connect to a point that is not the actual point that you're gonna put the real bow string on. Then you draw it back. And now you're free to string up the bow for real without having to wrestle with the prop. Just unbelievably useful. This is probably one of my favorite examples of work harder, not smarter. What did I just say? Okay, now let's actually string this up. Come over here, you gotta see this. So for this particular crossbow, it's gonna be a 70 inch length of string. You're gonna take both ends, tie them together. So now you've got a loop, put the loop around this way, pass it through, slide it down. Then over here on the other side, you're gonna take the loop, pinch the end and roll it up, see? We'll create these two loops right here, slide them over and that's it. We're ready to remove the fake string. <laughs> Hmm, I gotta tighten that. Now we're free to take off the fake string. Bro, what the heck? And now we finally get to remove the fake string. <laughs> yeah, nice, first try, cool. All right, now for the little D-loop type thing. It's not really a D-loop. I don't know, I'm gonna level with you guys. I, I feel kind of silly like educating anybody on like knots because I have literally no clue what I'm doing. Honestly, kind of the story of the whole channel, but especially not. So I'm not going to tell you this is like the way to do it. I'm just going to kind of show you what I did on the prototype. And if you know of something better to do, like, please, by all means, do that instead. So I'm starting with, I don't know, 14, 16 inches of paracord. What I'm keeping in mind here is protection for the section of the string that rubs against the track. And we need this loop here that actually is what loops around the two pegs. So I'm going to start by tying a regular old knot in the very, very tip of the string. And then I'm going to pass the other end of the string in between the two parts of the bowstring. And then from here, 
tie another regular old knot around the two strings. When you cinch them together, it squeezes the two strings together and makes it so that the knot could never pass back through. And then you go in the direction that the string kind of wants to go already, and you're just going to start weaving that string in between. You loop around the right string, pop up, you loop around the left string, pop up, and you just repeat that all the way across the track. And pull it upwards nice and tight every single time. And now we're going to finish off looping around the right side of the string, and with it popping out of the top, we loop around both strings, tie that off, <coughs> And then after redoing that entire thing with a longer string, we're going to end off by tying another little knot on the end, tie around this end of the bow string, and before you tighten that down, pass the little knot in between the strings. Cinch that down nice and tight, pull it in, and that locks it all up. This knot can't pass back through, so that, there, there's that. My wireless lav mic broke a while ago, haven't been able to replace it, so I'm going to just got to talk and then shoot and then come back and talk more. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. Talk to you later. Bye. I swear that wasn't it. When I pulled the trigger, it hooked around just this one and didn't release all the way. I think it's because the clamp is closer to this one. So I'm going to try to compensate for that by just filing this one down a little bit more. There we go. Where did that go? I was hoping it was stuck in the shed. Oh, okay. I gotta exercise a little self-control. Every time I make one of these things, I could just shoot it all day. Never get anything done. Well, I hope I convinced you you can make a crossbow for 20 bucks. And if you're not subscribed, I hope I convinced you to do that. I'm also gonna be active on Instagram now too. So give me a follow if you want. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.